uh, in the okay. chat. So just share my slide. So today, yep. Can you all see my slide? Yes, yes, I can. Okay. So, so good evening, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So today, uh, I welcome you uh, to the R4 Data Science uh, Book Club. So we are going through the ggplot2 uh, book. And today uh, we'll be looking at another chapter of the book, uh, which is about, uh, which is a, which talks about uh, colors, uh, scales, and also, uh, and also legend. So today, uh, I, so going forward, I think I, 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 since I still want to learn more about Quato, so I'll be work all my slides uh, with trying to use Quato uh, to design my slides. So for the learning objective uh, in which we'll be going through uh, for uh, today, we are going to learn how to map values uh, to colors uh, in ggplot2. And we are also going to learn uh, about uh, color uh, theory, uh, which is a more detailed exposition. Uh, which is available online, which is available online uh, in, I'm sorry, which is available online uh, in this uh, URL. So if you visit uh, this uh, URL, uh, they did uh, discuss uh, more in-depth uh, about uh, color uh, theories. So, but uh, the book kind of like go into a, a little bit about uh, the color uh, theory where they expose us uh, to the modern attempt uh, of uniform color uh, scale. So uh, because the modern attempts and in which they do uh, discuss in the book, they were talking about uh, how we can represent color uh, using this uh, three value, which is the hue, which is the hue, which ranges from the value between uh, zero uh, to uh, 360, which gives color of blue, red, and orange. They use uh, the hue to categorize the color and the values uh, for this uh, it ranges uh, between uh, zero uh, to three to three hundred and sixty. They also talk about uh, the chroma, so which is another uh, which is another quality of color, which this deals uh, with the purity of the color, ranging from zero, which is a gray color, to a maximum that varies uh, with uh, the luminance. They also talk about luminance, which has to do with the brightness of the color in which uh, we are trying to uh, present. Uh, and this value range from value zero, which stands for black, and to one, which is uh, for the white uh, color. Uh, but there are attempts whereby we'll be doing our visualization to people uh, that have different, uh, different backgrounds. So it's always good that we check, we check our visualization for uh, that our visualization meets the standard in terms of the color blindness, but they are they are useful tools in which uh, they do recommend in the book, uh, like the like the VS uh, VS check package. So this package help us uh, to check the color in which we are trying uh, to present that this color uh, the the color in which uh, we are uh, presenting the they are color blind uh, friendly. There is also another package in which uh, they do discuss when going through the book, which is uh, the the dichromat uh, package, which is another uh, a very good package in which we can use uh, to overcome the challenges of uh, color blindness. So there are some full function in which they also. Hey, hello, for me. Yes. Hey, sorry, we are we are seeing like the whole. Not just the presentation, but the notes and upcoming. I don't know why. Oh, sorry. Let me stop sharing again. But can you see the slide clearly now? No, we see the, only the slide. Only the slide? Yes. Yeah, fair. You can see only the slide now. OK, OK. It's so OK. Let me, so let me leave it this way. So they talk about, OK. They talk about uh, the color, the color blind of uh, uh, blindness package. In this blindness package, they use display colors. So they use rainbow colors. Here we specify that we just need a six uh, rainbow color. So once we do this, we can see that normal vision, this, this color is for 
is for normal vision. So this is the deal. Uh, this is for the sarsorate. So we can just choose any of this color. But to me, I uh, we can just choose any of this uh, color uh, that best uh, suit our needs. So which is also a very uh, good uh, function. They also look at the Viridis, uh, the Viridis package. So they still use the same function, uh, which is the color blindness. They say display all colors. So they say Viridis. Then they say Viridis. It should be six color, which uh, which going to give us uh, uh, this uh, this color. So uh, to to me, because if we want to present this uh, visualization, maybe in print. Uh, I do recommend, I think the saturate is looked is a little bit clear and also Protanop, which is another good color scale in which we can use uh, uh, for our visualization. So what about, uh, they also go in depth to look at uh, various uh, continuous uh, color scales in which we have uh, in, the, in the package. So they, are, they say there are multiple ways to specify uh, continuous color scales. So, but in ggplot2, we can use scale fill Viridis C. Viridis C, the, the C there stands for, maybe we have continuous value. We want to visualize it, those continuous values. So we need to use uh, scale fill uh, Viridis C. And we also we can also use uh, the scale fill distiller, which is another cool function in which we can use when uh, we want to visualize uh, values that are, that are continuous. So I will stop there. I don't know if uh, there are any uh, questions or comments before we proceed. Not from me. Okay, so, okay, so I can go ahead. So they, they said that the Veridis uh, scales are designed to be perceptually uniform in both colors and when reduced to black and white and so perceptible to people with various form of uh, color blindness. So it's very good. Uh, it's very good for all because it suits all uh, the kind of people in which we are trying to present our visualization. Maybe uh, people that are color blind, they don't like color. So we need to use uh, the Viridis package uh, which is uh, a very good uh, package. We just specify the scale field uh, VDDC, then uh, it's going to give us uh, this uh, color scale. We can see that we can see since uh, those value, uh, uh, they are all continuous. So it's going, just going to give us this uh, gradient, uh, uh, gradient uh, color scale, which is just an example I pick uh, from the book and I just put in my, in my slides. So this one is uh, from the scale color brewer. This is from the color brewer package. So we can use it uh, to also show this. So which shows uh, various uh, gradients, uh, gradient scales. Uh, they also talk about uh, uh, this package, which is the CISO package. Uh, I think uh, if you are really familiar with the tidy Tuesday, you see some visualization uh, in which they submit, majority of them, their color scale. Uh, they are using this uh, package, uh, which is the CISO package. It's a very, very good package. So we just specify the scale field CISO. Then we, within the scale field CISO, there are different uh, color palettes in which uh, we can uh, we can specify either large or large. So it's just going to give you uh, this uh, cool pack, this cool color gradients uh, that is in which uh, we can we can use uh, uh, to convey our message uh, to our audience. So they also talk about a uh, Paleta package. So Paleta package to me is, is just like a like a tidy verse of uh, color palette in R because what the Paleta package is, the main aim of the package is that they are collecting all the color, color palettes in which we can find in several other R package. So they are collecting all those color palettes and they are putting it in just one package. So I can, we, we can call it the, the tidy verse of color palettes. 
we can call it that the palette package is a tidy base of color palettes because it's collecting color palettes that are from other packages. So it's putting it all in one go. So we just need to specify within a scale field continuous or a scale field gradient. So this is going to give us uh, uh, the gradient uh, color scale uh, in our in our in our visualization. So for the gradient scale, we just say scale field gradient, which produces a two color, which produces a two color gradient. So and um, scale field gradient two produces a three color uh, gradient with a with a specified uh, midpoint, and scale field gradient n produces an n color gradient. So where we so, but uh, they also talk about uh, when we have uh, like a missing value, uh, when we have missing value, it's also possible that we can replace uh, by default missing value in which we have is ggplot2 is going to color uh, that missing value with a grayscale. Uh, but uh, if we use a black and white scale, uh, you might want to set it to something else to make it more obvious so that they, our audience can know that, oh, this certain data, I do not have it. So I want to show it that when we have so-so -so color, can you represent this, uh, use this uh, to uh, represent this missing value? Yeah, I say, say NA dot value is equals to NA missing values uh, will be invisible or we choose a specific color if that, uh, if that at all we do prefer, we can choose any other color in which we want to use it to show uh, the missing value. So like here, this is the default for ggplot2. It's going to show missing value using a uh, this grayscale. We can see that here, uh, there were missing value, but here we choose to use uh, white to show uh, where we have a uh, missing value. So here yeah, I use white. Uh, and here yeah, uh, I choose to use, uh, show the missing value. Uh, that is the NA dot uh, value. I specify it should be yellow. That I, anywhere we have missing value show, can you show me, let it, can you color fill it uh, with a yellow color? So that is what, uh, so we can also set, uh, limits, breaks, and labels uh, within our color scale. So we can suppress the breaks entirely by setting them uh, to null for the for the axis. So we can also remove the tick mark, uh, the grid lines, and also labels. And for legends, this removes the key labels. Uh, so for limit breaks and labels, so let me just bring the book again so that we see, it's like I missed something there. Let me pick the book. Sorry, I'm using a dual screen today. So let me pick the book. So I was here, limits, breaks, and label. Breaks and label. Was recipe. Missing value, we have talked about this. So uh, like here, this was the data frame uh, in which they show. So they did the visualization here. Okay, this was the base. This is the default for R, which is going to color missing value by grayscale. Uh, this is base for scale field gradient. NA dot value is set to NA. Then here will be white background. Here we have base plus scale field gradient and dot value. I set it to yellow. So this will be yellow uh, background. So for limit breaks, so here we still have uh, the base plots. Okay. So we have base. This is the base. We have base scale field gradient, uh, scale field continuous. Then they say limit should go from zero to 10,000. So we can see that we can set the limits uh, for the gradient uh, scale. We can set that, let the limits go from zero uh, to 10,000. So ggplot2 uh, understand. It will just arrange it uh, in that order. So 
Okay, so I think you can all see my still see my slides. Yes. yes okay. So for the legend, so we can also arrange uh, the legend. We can arrange it in this format. We can set it horizontal. We can set uh, the legend to be uh, vertical. We can also set the limit for the legend. Uh, we can use the default scale give discrete scale field discrete, which in turn default to uh, scale field view. So these two plots below are identical. So let's see the plot. So we can see this plot and this plot is the same. Is the same. This one, the first plot use scale field discrete for the discrete color scale. And the next second one on the right uses scale field hue, but we can see that uh, they are, the two plots, uh, they are identical. The two plots, they are still identical because they still default to the discrete color scale because these are discrete value and ggplot2 really understand and it still defaults to the discrete color scale. So the Brewa scale, so for the Brewa, we just need to specify uh, scale color Brewa is a discrete color uh, scale. So scale uh, color distiller, uh, this one is for the distilled uh, color scale and also scale color fermenter. These are also, these are all uh, continuous scales uh, and all these palettes uses scale color uh, Brewa, which uh, the which has a very good uh, website where we can check the website for the Brewa color palettes. We can see that this is a website. Uh, here we can choose either we want uh, to use sequential, is it divergent, or is it a qualitative color scale? Then we can check for the number of data classes. We can say, oh, let this be six, classify in six, then. Then these are the six color. Then I just need to copy this X color code. These are the unique X color code. Then that is what I'll use uh, for my visual visualization to show the color. But if I said I need 10 color scale, I just move to 10, okay? So ggplot2 is going to give me the color gradient. So I'm going to copy this X color code. So that is what I'm, I'm going to use uh, in ggplot2. So I think uh, the source code for this is also can be found in this link uh, in GitHub. Uh, the color Brewa, the source code, uh, we can see that there is a GitHub repository. So I can just start that repository that I will come back and the source code for the color Brewa, I think is on GitHub. So I think I can also put it in the chat, the link. Put it here. Where is the charts? Okay. So, can I proceed? Is there any questions so far? No questions. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So let's see, it's like, this is the real link. Let me copy this, copy this link. Yeah, that is the real link. Okay, so let me proceed. So, so for the R color Brewer package, so, so we can just display all the color palettes. So let's do that in R. Let's go to R. Let me put my house studio there in your the screen. Where is it? Oops. So here we have R, R color, R color 
Rewa display the this word. Sorry. So this will show us all the three color palettes. So we you can see the first group, the second, and also the spectra color palettes. So because in the book, uh, it was not showing it the way I wanted it to sh sh display. Sorry, why is it not moving? Okay, so here we talk about the bean color, the beans color uh, scales. Uh, uh, they said the color scale also come in bean version. So the default is still the scale field bean, which in turn default to scale field steps, which there also there is an example over here. Is an example here, which they discuss in the book. Where is it? Excuse me, no. The book is supposed to be there. Yep. I can't find. Okay, this is it. So, beans color scales. We are here. We have seen the legend. So, we can arrange the region using uh, the base, using the guides, because from the guides, we just say color, guide underscore color bar. Here, the direction was horizontal, so it's going to drop uh, the legend horizontally. Uh, we have seen the discrete color scale, okay? Which scale feel, discrete scale feel who still, they all still default that this is a discrete color scale. Uh, we have seen the Brewer uh, from the R color Brewer where we use uh, display Brewer.all to display all. And, and here we can specify those palettes uh, manually if we know the, where they belong. Uh, we are looking for the bean. We have seen this. We have talked about the paletta. Limit breaks, I've talked about limits, how to specify limits. Legends, I've looked at legends. Yeah, the beans color scale. So here we have scale field steps. So like we have erupt, which is our object, plus scale field steps, scale field bean, and scale field step n. Here they say the number of breaks should be eight. So we can see that for the first Visualization, we have this, so it's just going to show us uh, uh, the colors uh, using uh, uh, using uh, different uh, uh, color uh, gradients. So, so I can check my notes. Where is my slide? Yep. Okay, I hope you can all see my slide. Yes, we, we can. Okay. So we have looked at this bin color scale. So we can also achieve the same thing, can also be achieved uh, within our date uh, time object. So within our date time object, we have these functions called scale color date or 
scale color date time, which we can use to specify uh, the different breaks uh, within our dates. So here we can see, uh, we can specify that we want the dates should be only show only the years. So here we want it to be the months and also the year. So we can specify that uh, within for the uh, the date time. So like the alpha scales, uh, what this function does is that it helps us to manipulate uh, the transparency uh, of a shade to a value in the data and can be a convenient way to visually then with less important observations. So, so here we have scale alpha. It's an alias for scale alpha continuous since that is the most use of alpha and it saves a bit of uh, a bit of typing. So, so like for the alpha scale, so we can have our eruptions in which we have map. Then we have our weighting. So here we have density. So because of alpha, alpha help us to reduce uh, the transparency uh, in the plots. And it makes uh, this uh, plot uh, to be more uh, uh, clear, legible, because it reduces the transparency. It's going to reduce it a little bit in such a way we can still uh, convey a uh, uh, message to our audience. So we, we can also customize the legend uh, position. I think this can also be done. This can be achieved within the team. The position and justification of legends are controlled by the team setting. So legend.position, which takes the values of right, left, top, bottom, or none. So when we specify within the team legend.position, we when we say uh when we say right means that we want to place uh, the legend at the right because by default the legend is always placed by the right. When we specify left means that we want to place uh, the legend at the left hand side. When we say top, we want to place uh, the legend at the top. When we say bottom means that we want to place the legend at the bottom. When we say none means that we want to remove uh, the legend entirely uh, in our visualization. And we can also do achieve this. We can also play around the legend within the guide's arguments. We can also do achieve this, uh, manipulate the legend using the guides. So switching between the left, right, and top bottom modifies how the keys in each legend are laid out, horizontal or vertical, and how multiple legends are stacked horizontally or vertically. So as we are playing around with this team argument legend or position, we can say, oh, I want you to place the legend at this point, or I want you to place the legend at this point. So tweaking around this is going to affect the way the legend keys are arranged uh, in our visualization. So we need to take note of that. So, so we can also use uh, this function, legend direction, and the layout of items in legends can be either horizontal or, uh, or it can be uh, vertical. So I think, uh, I think uh, that was all I was able, the notes I was able to take. Uh, let me go back uh, to the book again and see, maybe let me go back to the book. So we have looked at the legend, so we can see within the legend, so we can say scale color bin. Then we have base within guides color. Guide color step show limits is true. So when we say show limits to be true, uh, means that in this default base plot, we can see that the limit is not showing 10, is not showing 50. But when we set show limit to true, is now showing the limit is 10 and the maximum limit is 50 which is uh, very useful. The date time color scale, we have seen that. Here we can say, let it be month and year. Uh, here we can see that we say, let it be just a uh, year. Uh, alpha scale, we have seen that legend position. So here we say, let it be left, place the legend here. Let it be right, which is the default. The legend will be here. Let it be at the bottom. So it's going to place the legend at the bottom, which is here. Uh, when we say none, there will be no legend at all in the in our plot. Uh, we can also say legend position, but when we are using this argument, uh, we need to give a vector 
of those actual positions where we want to place uh, the legend in our plot. But this is always very tedious because we are going to tweak around, play around with the code until we get the right position where uh, we want uh, the legend uh, to sit in our visualization. I think uh, that is all from the notes. I don't know if there is any other thing uh, that we want us uh, to discuss. Hello? Uh, well, for my part, no. I think everything is very clear. I think your presentation was very clear. I don't have any doubt on this chapter. Okay. What about uh, Zainab? I don't have any questions about the chapter. Okay. Thank you, 